before, no, once you do that, we're going to be going. It's, I mean, it's 9.57. Oh, okay. And then, so you hit start streaming, and then go back here, and hit go live, and then back to this. Good morning. morning. Welcome to uh, worship at uh, First Congregational Church in Union City, Michigan. Uh, my name is Pastor Don Mason, and it's my pleasure to be with you for this time of worship. Uh, I'm uh, trusting that we're live right now, and, uh, and our worship always begins with this statement. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And we're, be, we're very glad to be sharing and worship with you this morning. This phrase is a national phrase that our United Church of Christ utilizes, but it's also a phrase that sums up where we are here in Union City. Because we know that your journey matters, my journey matters, and we've been through a lot of twists and turns that have brought us to this point in our lives. And... Uh, Everything that has happened to you in your life has added up to the complete person that you are. And you are acceptable the way you are. Even though I've only been here a short while, uh, I feel like I've been here my whole life. Uh, some of us believe that this coronavirus has, has changed days into weeks and weeks into years and months into decades. And, uh, and, and it just seems like that. But, uh, but we seek to do the things that we do uh, with God at the center of our lives, with the proclamation that God loves you and that Christ's love is unconditional. So this is what worship looks like these days uh, with uh, people in masks, uh, a few people in sanctuaries, but most of our group is gathered virtually. And so we invite you as virtual worshipers to participate as fully as you can 
in the worship experience that we're having this morning. Um, the, the, uh, the bulletin is online. You can see it. Uh, in, we also have a bulletin in hand. You can see uh, 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 the bulletin at our website. You can download and that also has uh, the prayer concerns and the announcements for the, sun, for the, for the Sunday morning. We, don't, uh, we, we haven't been doing vocal announcements on Sunday mornings because we're trying to make sure that the people that are in the sanctuary are limited in their time of exposure with one another, even though we are all wearing masks, even though we are in a well-ventilated building, we still want to make sure that we're as safe as possible in this time. We trust that you're all doing the same thing. Um, and now we'll begin our time of worship with the ringing of the bell. my path and my lying down. You know 
and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before words on my tongue, you know it completely. You have hemmed me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. from your presence. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, of what a parable is. A parable is a made-up but realistic story that Jesus told to try to explain God's truth. Right? So that's what I got out of all of that. Okay, after all that, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite parables, which is the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. What, will, what can we learn from the mustard seed? Well, I think that we can learn that we are never too small to be important to God. You may be small, but you can spread the love of God. How? Just be kind to everyone you meet. Share. 
Make a card for someone who is lonely. There are a lot of lonely people right now. If you are kind and loving, it may inspire that person to be kind and loving. And that can go on and on. So yesterday I was looking at Facebook and a friend of mine posted that her son, a young adult, and his buddy went to pick up some food. They had on their masks and an elderly man thanked them for possibly saving his life. Wow. Think about that. A very small thing and a grateful man. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, help us to remember, help us to remember that size is not important. That size is not important. In your kingdom. In your kingdom. You can use even the smallest. You can use even the smallest of us to bring change to the world. Of us to bring change to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We are so blessed to have them to fight for us. To have all the many gifts of our congregation that have been expressed during this time, even though uh, you know we can't gather the way that we normally have, we've still fulfilled this mission of our church and the mission of our congregation to continue to show God's love in so many different ways. Uh, today we turn to the scriptures and we turn to the gospel according to Matthew. Um, Diane, you couldn't have done a better job of setting up the scriptures than, than, than you did. That's, that's wonderful because, uh, you know, these are succinct didactic metaphorical constructions that, uh, <laughs> that we all do well to listen to, but they're very simple and very, uh, very important to understand. So here now, this uh, message from uh, Matthew 13, verses 31 and 33, and uh, continuing with verses 44 through 52. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. So he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. May God add a blessing to this, our hearing and understanding of this, the word of God. Amen. Hmm. Well, so there it is. We've got these wonderful parables, one after another, and Jesus said to them, Do you understand all this? And they said, Yes. So I ask you that same question. Do you understand all this? And you said, No. <laughs> so there's work to do, isn't there? <laughs> So there is work to do. And, you know, and one of the things that you could do is you could take each one of these parables and preach a whole sermon about them, and I'm not going to do that today, okay? Um, and you can, try, you can try in a lot of different ways to connect them together and just preach about one. And, uh, and, and I, just, I just had a brainstorm about that. Because one of the things that we know about a mustard seed, and as, as wonderful it is as it is about this mustard seed, that it grows into such a tree, and birds of the air come and they make their nests in it. If that mustard seed grows up in a vineyard, it is a nuisance. It is not a great thing to have the birds of the air come in and raid your vineyard. You do not want all those birds in there eating your grapes. Sorry. Same thing with a dose of leaven in three measures of flour. Um, three measures of flour is probably more bread than you can make in a month. 
So if you leaven it before you're ready to make all that bread, you've got three measures of flour that's leavened, and you can't bake bread enough, you can't bake bread fast enough for it. You have to give it out to your neighbors. You have to get rid of that leavened flour because the way that bread was preserved, especially in Jesus' day, was the unleavened. That's why they made so much unleavened bread. So, again, that's not necessarily a good thing to just take enough yeast to leaven three measures of flour because if you do that all at once, then what are you going to do with it? Okay? Same thing with a big old mustard tree that's in your vineyard. How do you, how do you manage that? Um, and the treasure of the pearl and the treasure. Both of those things. Again, it's not necessarily a good thing that you found this great treasure and then you buried it in a field because it's at risk. It's such a, field, such a treasure that you can't carry it all yourself, right? Otherwise, you find it, you carry it away, right? But in order to make sure that that treasure is available to you, you bury it, you go by the field, and then you can take it as you need it to share and similar to that pearl, you know, finding that pearl, you're still risking everything that you have in order to be in possession of that pearl. And it's not always a good thing to find the most beautiful thing in the world because you don't always have the means to possess it. Um, but the great thing about the seed, the leaven, the pearl, and the treasure is that they're all available to us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's something that isn't so much of a burden that you can't share it with the world. Um, I, I was talking about parables and I was thinking about these parables all week, but then last night I had a dream. <laughs> and it wasn't like the dreams I've been dreaming lately because some of the dreams that I've been dreaming, I might have told some people about that there were too many people in church and that nobody was wearing masks and that we were ruining social distancing for each other and that we were going to wind up everybody sick with the coronavirus and going home uh, ill. And fortunately, that hasn't happened again this week. <laughs> um, but uh, the dream I had last night was uh, that I was in like a, a, a little city park or a town park. And I was surrounded by a bunch of men, all right? Now, I can look around at this congregation this morning and I can see that men are in the minority in our congregation right now. You know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six men out of 19 people in attendance. So. Yeah, we're in a minority here, and, and that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes. But this time, I was in a, just a group of all men. And there were men that were old, there were men that were young, there were men that were big, there were men that were small, and we were just hanging out together. Um, and it was very much, to me, like the dream that Martin Luther King had. I have a dream. Because there were men of every different skin color, there were men of all, you know, of all faiths, there were men of all different belongings. Wealth, power. And we were all just kind of hanging out in the park. And one by one, the men would come up and do a little presentation. And they would just talk about themselves and say, this is, this is who I am and this is how I am here. And this is why I'm here. Um, and then there was this one guy that was just so, so anxious to get up there and, and, and share. And, and he got up and he's, and he's rocking back and forth and he says, I like hamsters. And then he walked down and sat down with the rest of the group. And, and I'm like, okay. A lot of these guys are sharing some pretty profound things about their faith. And to have one guy just come up there and say, I like hamsters. It was like, yeah. 
Shouldn't we all feel like no matter what kind of a group of company that we're in, we can be our whole selves and that's all we have to share? To say, I like hamsters. And that's one of the most profound things that I can say about myself. That, and nobody makes fun of you for that. Everybody accepts you for that. Everybody connects with you on a visceral level because you've been able to be a person of peace that was able to stand up there and bear your soul in front of a crowd, even if it's only to say, I like answers. Um, being yourself and loving who you are enough to express that whole self in all that you do is something that is this treasure that's hid in a field. It's this pearl of great value. It's this mustard seed. Because what if, you know, you, I, met, I envision this treasure chest, right? You got this chest and you're burying it in the, in the field and then you open the treasure chest and it's a mustard seed. It's not gold. It's not great wealth. You ever hear that song, One Tin Soldier, right? Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. There won't be any trumpets blowing on the judgment day, on the, on the bloody morning after the Wenton soldier rides away because these people thought that the great treasure was tons of gold and all it was was a statement, peace on earth. Okay? The treasure hidden in a field the pearl of great value, even the leaven that inflect, infects three measures of flour all point to the outside, outsized impact you are having on your own life and the lives of those people around you. So uh, build on that notion. Build on that notion. Let peace and striving for generosity of spirit be the centerpiece of your faithful actions. Men and women of peace seek a different result from our lives than dominance or power or greed or wealth because that's the wide road. That's the easy way out. To say, I'm going to make sure that I have enough money, I have enough power, I have enough strength to be able to do whatever I want with my life. And Jesus says, you know, um, that's the wide road, because anybody can do that. Anybody can achieve that if they have enough greed, if they have enough know-how, and if they want to do just about anything to succeed. Anybody can do that. But if you want to be faithful, and you want to be a person of peace, if you want to be generous, sometimes you're not going to be able to succeed in those ways. There's plenty of money to go around. There really is, right? We can see that some people have amassed tremendous wealth in this world. And we like to think that, you know, if we had a little piece of that, we might do a little better with it, right? But there's plenty of money to go around. It's just hard for some people to realize when they have enough. So instead, as we try and be men and women of peace, we need to try and celebrate an inner journey of love and peace that can allow us to feel complete as agents of not more-ishness, but agents of love and agents of generosity. And after I woke up from this dream, I read a, a, a daily devotional from Richard Rohr, and it was like, okay, thank you because you finished my sermon for me as I was waking up. And uh, he wrote, because one of the issues that we talked about a little bit last week, and we just touched on with weeds and wheat, is the issue of nonviolent resistance. That the weeds and the wheat grow up together, right? That, uh, that, that there's resistance that, that, that happens when you've got mixed groups of people. There's tension in a mixed group of people that have different sets of belief. We have a tremendous tension in our society today. But the nonviolent way out 
is to not let that tension re result in mortal conflict. Not result in violence, but let that tension be worked out by the angels. Jesus said again, the angels are going to come and take care of that. We don't have to do that. <laughs> we'll be wise to try and figure it out as we go along and figure out who we can hang with and who we can't. And who makes sense as a leader and who doesn't. But the angels will sort all that stuff out. And Richard Rohr wrote, training in nonviolence helps us admit that our secret inner attitudes are often cruel, attacking, judgmental, and harsh. The ego seems to find its energy precisely by having something to oppose, to fix, or to change. When the mind can judge something to be inferior, we feel superior. We must recognize our constant tendency toward negating reality, resisting it, opposing it, and attacking it on the level of our mind, because this is a universal addiction. Authentic spirituality, on the other hand, is first about you about allowing your own heart and mind to be changed. It's about getting your own who right. Who is it that is doing the perceiving? Is it your illusory, separate, false self, or is it your true self, who you are in God? And then he quoted Thomas Keating. We are all like localized vibrations of the infinite goodness of God's presence. So love is our very nature. Love is our first, middle, and last name. Love is all, not love as sentimentality, but love that is self-forgetful and free of self-interest. We can be men and women of peace. We can be men and women of love and generosity. And it's not too late. That was what my dream told me this morning. It's not too late for us to find that part in this world and hang out there with each other and acknowledge our own wholeness and our own need to be whole in companionship with each other and that men can do this right now. Even though there's a lot of equality among men and women, there's a lot of power that's still held in the hands of men that are wealthy and powerful. And it's not too late. We're learning that as we go. For us to be self-forgetful and free of self-interest, in the words of, Tom, uh, of Thomas Keating, so that uh, we don't wind up with just one tin soldier riding away at the end of a violent conflict. I rejoice in this ministry which we share through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope that you feel like this is a time when you're ready to respond to this gospel message that's been placed upon your hearts. Um, when you came in this morning to the sanctuary, you might have walked by one of the offering plates in the front, front or the back of the sanctuary. And uh, if you didn't put in an offering at that time, you can do that now. If you did it online this week, thank you very much. Uh, if, you, uh, if you decided that this week you needed to support uh, somebody else that was in a nonprofit really, really struggling and needed to have uh, a little extra gift from you, that's, that's, that's wonderful because this time of giving is something that uh, we know we can be generous. Uh, we know we have a lot of the same costs in our lives that we've always had, but we also know that, uh, that our lives are simpler and uh, more difficult these days uh, because of the ways that, uh, that, that, that we've been uh, that we've been uh, kind of forced to live. So uh, be generous with yourself and your family. Be generous with uh, your church. Be generous with your time and be generous with your talent. But find a way to give something this week uh, 
in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and for our joys and concerns, um, Denise, Mac's mom, Mike's aunt, uh, prayers for Tucker. We had a really nice long email from Layla's parents talking about the successes that she's received in her treatments. Uh, let us know if you want to if you want to see that. We can pass that along. Uh, prayers for healing from Wanda, Lisa, Jennifer, Nikki, Brian, Brenda, Diane, and again Layla. You know, we, we have a longer list of prayers as time goes on, and that's a good thing, because we know that prayer works. Uh, prayers for the birthday boy, uh, Bill Parks. <laughs> uh, he's no longer a boy. <laughs> uh, and for Dinah Clayton, T Tessa Miller, and then the real birthday boys, the twin boys, Miles and Julia and Mary, that are going to have their first birthday this week. Can you believe it? Holy cow, time has flown and it has stood still. <laughs> so as we bring these names up and we bring our time of prayer together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, you bring to us messages in our times of quiet and in our noisy times Messages of peace and love and truth. Messages of understanding and joy. Messages of welcome and challenge. And gracious God, you will continue to grant us opportunities to respond to your word. Walk with us through these days to come. That we may continue to protect each other in this time of a pandemic. That we may continue to receive your words of understanding and hope, especially at times when we feel most depressed and hopeless. That you gather us into a community of diverse people who can be united in a goal. So live with us. Hope with us. Rejoice with us. And cry with us. As we seek to be your people at work in a world that sometimes welcomes us and sometimes pushes us away. But still, needs to know about our whole selves as men and women of peace. So hear us now in the silence of our hearts. And now will you pray with me the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then we close by affirming our faith, uh, utilizing the statement of faith that was uh, written 63 years ago by our, uh, our founding uh, generation of, of church leaders. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, Create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. 
you seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, to resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. And I go in peace to serve Christ with peace.